I can't believe they did it. It's the Acolyte. It's the penultimate episode. Oh, my God. They had Carrie Ann Moss collecting moss. It's the greatest. (laughs) This show couldn't get any worse. If they paid someone to make it worse, I just I just don't see how it's possible. And um, I love every second of it. I am I have found tidbits in this that have made I've had a miserable week, and this just made it <laughs> amazing. I am so glad I saw this. I've not watched a single other person review this, so I'm going off of what this is my cold my own opinions, which I mean they usually are. So, but I do watch reviews afterwards just because I'm curious what everybody else is saying. But I have some tidbits that I bet you nobody else has touched. Nobody. Oh, I'm so excited to tell you guys. Uh, I feel ashamed when they call you my name. Oh, I got, I got some good stuff for you guys. You have, you have no idea what you're in for. Anyway. I and the man you may know as he from our reviews will kill you. I'd really appreciate it if you, I always forget. Thumbs up, like, subscribe. Those are important. And I know everybody says it all the time, but I watch a video and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't subscribe. Oh my gosh, I forgot a likes up or like or thumbs up. So it helps. Anyway, seventh episode, pan ultimate episode of The Acolyte. We finally found out that Jedi is bad. Who knew the Jedi were bad and would cover up things? But it's weird because ultimately it doesn't like really change anything. I don't know. We'll go through it a little bit. But before we get there, I kind of have to share this with you. And by no means am I disrespecting Grammy Award winner Victoria Monet, who lends her voice to the Acolyte. I just never knew what a joy it would be to have R&B or hip-hop and my Star Wars. You know, who needs John Williams' stupid classical music when I could have hip-hop like this and my episodes of Star Wars? I didn't know. And I didn't know it was an exclusive song just for the Acolyte, and it's called The Power of Two. They genuinely thought people would be like, The Power of One, The Power of Two, The power of many! They thought people would get that tattooed on their arms. I'm getting a tattooed on right here. The power of many! It's going to happen, folks. This is so crazy. It's an original end credit song debuting. I love it. I mean, I don't... (laughs) The song's not terrible, except the lyrics are terrible. (laughs) Because she's trying to fit in. The power of two. <laughs> like, what? Is this real? And her her excitement and joy. You now, this was written. She co-wrote it. And uh, she wrote some song called Judas and the Black Messiah. Sounds amazing. Grammy award-winning producer, DeMille. Award-winning composer, Michael Abels. Get Out and Us. Um, the song's not terrible. I'm not saying that it's terrible. The lyrics are terrible because she's trying to fit them to this stupid show. Uh, but I'm just I'm gonna play once one little hit, like a taste. I, feel the shame when they call me I don't know what that means. But <laughs> I I feel ashamed when they call me your name. I don't know what that means. And she's like the power of two. Like, I get it. I, I think the beats actually, it's, it's fine. The song is a good song. But what what are we even talking about here? It's from StarWars.com. I don't think I played enough to get yanked. But let's go to Forbes first. The Acolyte reveals its true villain. Nothing in this show makes any sense. Nobody's motivations make any sense. But I do finally know where all the money went. It went to de-aging. They, if there's a $180 million budget, $100 million was spent on de-aging. Um, oh, what's his name? Jung Lee? I, I think that. And, and Carrie Ann Moss. I, I just, I don't. Why? 
why did you spend all this money on de-aging them? And these particular episodes, it seems like he. this is when he... When they did the de-aging stuff, it seems like when he just learned English for this show. And then the stuff where he's not de-aged, he clearly under he does English much better. So there are scenes where he doesn't respond in words because he doesn't seem to know English, which is shocking. He's a, a great actor, but all I don't the de-aging it just throws me. I just don't know what I'm watching here. So it's a full-on flashback episode, nothing in the present, which means that nothing, we learn nothing about Smilo Ren, we learn nothing about Shrek, the green-headed woman. All we get is the full flashback, where the first five minutes is the Jedi talking, not talking at all, collecting moss. And, and then they start interspersing. It's almost a clip show where they intersperse Scenes that we saw before, but from a different perspective. Did you know that when Osha and her sister May were fighting over the fancy tree that they hang out, that Master Soul was hanging out, creeping out on them? His noble intention, he's a villain. I, this is just, all of this is so stupid. I could see, and that's, I, it's more, not only is it stupid, it's frustrating because there is a story that could have been told. The pacing is 100% atrocious. Nothing that happens makes sense. I feel bad for the actors because they're, they're not bad. They're just, I mean, in this particular episode, nobody stands out as bad. It's just their motivations make no sense. And, uh, yeah, it just, it's weird. And, and it's funny because this is, uh, Paul Tassie from Forbes. And he's like, I was wondering if the idea of the entire episode three story was fake. And the Jedi went rogue and full on slaughtered everyone at the base and mind wipe OSHA. Well, that didn't happen either. What happened was just stupid. And soul, <laughs> It comes off as a creep because he's trying to creep on Osha. And uh, I don't know why. They don't give any explanation. She's like, I feel like she's destined to be my, my Padawan. And I guess everybody's a youngling. Doesn't matter. Uh, so they're debating over what, whether or not the coven is danger, dangerous or not. You know, the Jedi stumble upon this coven. You would think that they could scan things and they would have seen that there was a settlement or former, they would have searched former settlements. Why they're literally searching the entire planet by hand makes no sense to me. And this is also the first time they've even mentioned virgences in, in, I've never even, okay, maybe I heard of virgences in the prequels, but I don't remember them. I think quite, not quite, John, but, um, Samuel L. Jackson says something about virgences. Like, this is a virgins in the force. So this entire planet was supposed to be decimated, and it's grown back because reasons, which is a virgins in the force. And they want to study the virgins in the force. It's super important. We need to get back to the Jedi Council, except they don't tell anyone after this that there's a virgins in the force on Bendok. I think that's the name of the planet. All of this is incredibly stupid. So we know all of what happens. We just see it from a different perspective. Padawan Torbin, none of his motivations make any sense. He's getting, you know, mind graped by the main mother. And she's like, I'll give you what you want. You can go back to Coruscant. How? Do you have a spaceship packed in your pocket? And if she did influence him to act... Because what ends up happening is they see the twins, they talk to the mothers, they find out there's twins, and Sol and Torbin go nuts and decide to attack the base to save the kids. Because they think the kids are in trouble, and Torbin thinks, if we get the kids, we can take them back to Coruscant, and I can go back to Coruscant. Why does he want to go back to Coruscant? I don't know. Maybe because he's very, he's sad, he's lonely. I thought they weren't supposed to have feelings or, you know, attachments to anything, but he's homesick. He wants to go home to see his mommy. None of it makes sense. How, if he steals them, he's going to get a ticket back to court? That doesn't make any sense. Soul encourages him 
and goes to fight beside him. So if the Reverend Mother, if Mother Anicia said she planted this idea in his head that she could get him a ticket back to Coruscant, then she's ultimately responsible for what happens because he's exonerated for his actions because he's been manipulated by her to go and figure out the best way to get back to Coruscant, which is to kidnap her daughters, which makes no sense. And then he, uh, instead of manipulating him, they manipulate Kalnaka. The entire coven possesses Kalnaka. Master Indara kills the entire coven. I don't know. No one bothers to answer anything. Some people think they, this guy thinks that they were knocked out and then the fire killed them. Why didn't the Jedi just move them? They all have like force powers. They have a spaceship. They could have tried to land the spaceship and flown. I don't care. Move them. None of this makes sense. All reason has fled the building. Then um, Soul kills the mother for no reason. She and he thinks that Osha's like none of it makes any sense. None of it. The whole thing is is a complete disaster, waste of time. And then they decide at the end to cover it up. Indara, who's been fighting with Soul the entire time, is like, yeah, you know what? Let's just cover this up. Let's just do it. Don't worry about it. Don't even think about it. Let's just cover it up. And then they it's just so dumb. And then here's another article. Uh, is this from StarWars.com? No, this is from Polygon. Polygon. The Acolyte is hinging its whole story on virgences, of all things. Star Wars silliest plot devices back. Yeah, they do the whole midichlorian thing. And and that's the one thing nobody likes. Nobody likes midichlorians. Nobody likes the idea that you have things in your blood to make you possess the Force. They don't ever mention virgences ever again. Here they go. Virgences were also mentioned in Phantom Menace by Qui-Gon during a conversation with Mace Windu. They don't expand on it, but they just normal places with unusually high concentrations of the force. Do they explain why there's one there? Nope. Do they do any? And and that's fine. Nexus points of the force. We get it. The the cave on Dagobah offset Yoda so he could hide and and cover himself. The same thing in the mirror cave with Rave with Ray on Octo. I mean, I guess that that's the same reason why Skywalker was there. Okay, fine. It's fine. Whatever. I mean, I'm okay with it. But they don't... They show... They go out of their way to show this, like, pit that the women are doing something with. And then they don't explain any of it. Uh, just, just, what are we doing here? Why are we doing this here? I don't know. All of this is just garbage. But I do love the idea that we got a song called The Power of Two. There's just so much to love about this and hate and love at the same time i am thoroughly enjoying myself i i literally watched the episode and and when the end credits hit i was like what the f did i just watch and then on top of it i was like that was so effing stupid and then on top of that i was like oh my god they're playing a hip-hop song at the end of a stuff what what is this and then i listened to the song and the lyrics and i was like they did not just say the power of two and then they what are they what are, they say something else weird in that song about like twin flames. I don't know where this is going because it's incoherent and I don't I kind of don't care. I like Smilo Ren. I'm into Smilo Ren. I'm into all the sexual innuendo. Give it to me. I love it. Grab onto my lightsaber. It feels good in my hand. <laughs> like what this show is so stupid. It's so stupid and bereft of logic, but I I am I am loving it. I am loving it way more than I loved Obi Wan Kenobi. I absolutely hated Obi Wan Kenobi, and I still do. And this is just such a joke. I can't, I can't even get. I just can't. But clearly, they spent you know thirty million dollars went into Leslie Headland the former assistant of Harvey Weinstein and the showrunner of this 30 million went in her pocket to say thank you for shutting up about all the other women that were abused. And then uh, I'm going to say, so that's, there's like a $180 million budget, give or take. 
right? So then a hundred million went into making it de aging everyone, and then thirty million went into the rest of the show because there's <laughs> there's like three sets at all of this. Oh, it's good. I can't believe they had another flashback show. They could have taken these flashbacks. It's my last point. We talk about pacing, right? And you're trying to pace a show. They could have inserted the flashbacks into the rest of the story as we went along to show Master Soul's impulsiveness and show him being... Instead of just being like, oh, he's a, such a good guy. I love this guy. They could have kept showing like, oh, no, he's impulsive. He has issues. He can't control himself. You know, uh, Master Trinity has to come and like s settle him down. They could have dropped hints through the rest of the show and changed the pacing of it. And just this is just shows why Leslie Hesling Hedlin cannot write. So let me know what you think in the, in, in the comments below. I would love to talk about it more. Are you going to buy a Smilo Ren helmet as I wish I could? They're sold out, but maybe one day I'll get one. I th Did you like the song? Because I'm bringing you hot hotness here. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I do love all y'all. Thank you. Like and subscribe. Catch our podcast. It's up here every Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join us. It's a good time had by all, but thank you very much. But I'm on to the next one.